Looking at the first round right now, you could have a legitimate argument that seven to nine of the first round picks could actually be running backs. And I think that if you hit on one of those running backs, you have a serious chance to win a championship in your league. What do you have done? All right. Welcome back in. I have absolutely no idea where Noah is. The guy didn't hit me up to record this week. So chilling here on a Saturday, prepping for some fantasy because I'm a psychopath and I'm ready for it to go. And while doing that, something interesting has popped up because I've always kind of been the guy to push off the running backs into the later rounds and be like, oh, like I'll figure out running back later, blah, blah, blah. Last year, I, I won my fantasy championship. Um, I had Christian McCaffrey on my team, and it made the absolute utmost difference. Um, I think that like 50 plus percent of people who had Christian McCaffrey on their team like made it to the final, which is like kind of ridiculous to think about. So um, I was kind of looking at all of the possible first round players and the ones that stick out to me the most or excite me the most to take are pretty much all running backs and in the in the past like two years i think that that really wasn't the case so what i'm gonna go over today is why i think the fantasy running back is officially back at least for the 2024 season so i pulled three stat three player stats from last year that kind of if you had them on your team they were a little bit of a game changer for you you were you had a pretty good record or you were at least in every week and competitive first, obviously Christian McCaffrey, 339 touches over 2000 all purpose yards, 21 touchdowns baller. Next Raheem Mostert, 234 touches, 1200 all purpose yards, 21 touchdowns. I mean, those guys from a touchdowns perspective, you can't, you can't beat that last was a guy who I thought was extremely interesting was Kyron Williams with 260 touches, 1300 all purpose yards and 15 touchdowns. I think he only played 12 games. Um, I mean, talk about making up for, for some lost time. I mean, that, that is a ridiculous season for missing a majority of it with an ankle injury and then coming back and still being a game changer. So, but all three of these guys didn't play the entire season last year. They missed one, two few games, but when they were in there, they still made up for lost time and, and were balling out. And I mean, you can see from that, they had a mass amount of touches, a lot of yards and a ton of touchdowns in comparison to the wide receivers. First, let's go with CD lamb. He played in every single game last season, 135 touches, 1700 yards, 12 touchdowns. I get it. Before we dive into the wide receivers, everybody's going to sit here and be like, well, if you play in PPR, like obviously those are points. And I understand that, but when you're thinking about what is a possibility, like how to kind of set your team over the edge, you're thinking who, who are the guys that are going to score these touchdowns? So think of that while I'm going over these stats. Next, Tyreek Hill, 119 touches, a little under 1,800 yards, 13 touchdowns. Last, Amara St. Brown, 119 touches, 1,500 yards, 10 touchdowns. I mean great seasons by all of these guys but these were the top guys who led the league in receptions last season and we are getting a significant amount even kyron williams who had who missed a significant amount of time finished with almost well a hundred plus more touches on the season than cd lamb does so this is why i think the fantasy running back is back in the 2024 season First, Justin Jefferson, our fantasy superstar the last two to three years. They have a big question mark at quarterback. I don't know if anybody right now feels fully comfortable taking Justin Jefferson in the top five. In my opinion, the top 12 this fantasy season because of that massive question mark at quarterback. I think it's got to be to a point where he needs to be able to prove himself. Not him because he's obviously great. The quarterback needs to prove that he can make Justin Jefferson a viable fantasy option for all of us to invest our first round pick in that player. Next, Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase was kind of like the next guy 
uh, he's going to go number. Some people were like, I, you could have him or Justin Jefferson as a number one fantasy wide receiver. He let a lot of people down last year and he didn't, but Burrow did. So Burrow, I love him. He's a question mark, honestly, for me. He's always hurt. He needs to prove to me that he can stay healthy. And if the, if this is going to happen where he misses large portions of the season with a knee injury, a thumb injury, whatever each year, I'm out on him. I don't like the slow. I don't like the slow starts at the beginning of the year. I don't like the injury risk, and even the latest um, report on his thumb. He pretty much said it was still in pain, which, in my head, is is a red flag. So, I think that you can kind of get better value in like the second to fourth round of wide receiver. Like I think of the wide receivers who were taken in the second round last year, uh, Saint Brown, even later, Puka Nakua. Obviously, he was a, a waiver wire pickup. Tank Dell taken way later in the draft. Nico Collins taken way later in the draft. Turns out to be a dog. And then Brandon Ayuk, who was taken in the mid rounds as well. These are all guys who have a ton of value that were taken way later in the in the in the um, in the draft, but still put up wide receiver one numbers. So you sit there and think, can we get ninety percent, eighty five percent? of what CD lamb gets me in the third round and take one of these game changing running backs. Listen to the list of these running backs that are probably going to go in the first round or the top of the second. And it's star studded CMC Kyron Williams, Brees hall, Brees hall last season. Go, go watch him on the worst offense in the NFL. He was a game changer catches the ball. B. John Robinson. I'm, I'm expecting him to take a huge step next this season. Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor two years ago was the best player in fantasy football. He's fully healthy. He's on that new contract. Anthony Richardson's back. I'm expecting a big breakout again for Jonathan Taylor and the Shane Steichen offense. And then fringe first. For me, I just don't see how Saquon Barkley doesn't go in the first round. I just don't. If he's healthy, he's an absolute game changer. And this is the first time he's ever going to be on an offense with a star-studded group, an actual good scheme. And they're going to enhance him because everybody else around him is better than we've seen the past few years in New York. And when he got in the zone in New York and was playing well, it, it was it was fun to watch. So on a significantly better team, I'm just finding, unless if injury happens, finding a really hard time that Saquon doesn't produce at a very high level. Next, Derrick Henry. <laughs> this guy, I've been out on the last three seasons and I've been wrong every single time. Now, looking at it, he's going to be on a highly competitive team in the, with the Baltimore Ravens. He has Lamar Jackson as his running back. I mean, as his quarterback, sorry. He has a great O-line, a great run scheme on a great team. I'm excited to watch Derrick Henry on the Ravens this season. Even though he's still old, I still think that he makes a difference in this team. I think he's going to be a great uh, uh, red zone running back. I think he's still going to do his thing in the game as well. Last, last is like, I don't know. We can sit here. I think people are going to feel different ways about this, but I think Jameer Gibbs has to be taken serious this season as a fantasy running back. Um, he was electrifying last year. He looked so good every single time they got the ball in his hands. And I'm excited to see what they have in store for him this next season because they kind of slow played him the entire season, leaned on uh, Montgomery. But as the season went on, we saw how important he was to that team and how electrifying he was. He can catch the ball and he could run like crazy. I love Gibbs this season. So Looking at that, I think that the two solidified options at wide receiver in the first round currently are C.D. Lamb and Tyree Kill. And you kind of look at it, they're not similar from like a player perspective. From like a production perspective, though, both of them are bona fide superstar one, number one wide receivers on their team. They both are going into the season with the same quarterback, the same head coach, the same offensive scheme, and a pass-heavy offense. So I don't think that there's any reason why we can't sit here and think that CD and Reek aren't going to still be those guys and do their thing. But the rest, I think that there's a lot of question marks around these wide receivers who we can argue should go in the top 12. So that's why I'm sitting here thinking being like, man, this list, 
CMC, Kyron Williams, Brees Hall, Bijan running back, Bijan Robinson, Jonathan Taylor, Saquon, Jameer Gibbs, Derrick Henry. Man, I don't know. I think I want one of those guys on my team because I think that all of these guys have real potential to score 20 plus touchdowns or 18 to 20 touchdowns and make that difference on their team and make a difference on your fantasy team. So I'm declaring it right now and we'll come back to this at when the season is going on and, and after the season. But right now I'm declaring the fantasy in fantasy football, the running back is back and I'm excited for it. And I can't wait to get one of these guys on my team this season. I think that we can sit here and officially say that the the fantasy in fantasy football the running back is back. Audio jungle.